90s, I came across a uh, article by a guy named Gershom Lakeman, who was more famous for something called Love and Death. It's in a magazine that was being published called American Notes and Queries. Uh, ran from 1940 to 52. And people would just write in questions and people would answer them. It's like an early internet thing on paper of bulletin boards and stuff. And a guy named Jay Mater, who did interviews that were published in RBCC back in the day and became an editor of uh, New York Daily News, in let me know that, hey, I should check out this magazine called American Notes and Queries. Well, it's about this big. Um, it was a British version, and this was an American version of that. And 1941, it was like looking for oh, nuggets in, in a river of gold nuggets and stuff. I'm paging through all this stuff on anything you can imagine being asked about. And in 1941, I issue, I encountered a question by August Derleth on early comic strips, Crazy Cat, Little Nemo, he's asking these questions. August Derleth in the Arkham House, he um, actually published a Little Nemo pamphlet magazine thing, brown cover, in 1945. Um, major comics collector, his holdings ended up at um, Wisconsin State Historical Society, and his science fiction stuff's well sorted out, and the comics has never been touched, really, it's like all mixed up. And I would do Chicago shows and then drive up there and like ask to see some more boxes and I'd be flipping through that stuff and you had this little room, couldn't take any photographs, you couldn't do anything other than just page at this stuff. But his question led to another, some responses and within about a year there was a guy named Clifford Shipley from the New York State Historical Society was writing in with this, there's this early comic book called The Adventures of Ichabod Crane and then some other issues go by and there's back and forth and stuff like this. And there's a gap where the, the magazine's not published for a couple of years, for 1944-45 and the paper shortages. And in January 1946, reappearance, it's a thicker issue, there's this long letter from Gershon Lehman. And I, we, the thing is, like, he, he went to the, this love of death and then were them pulled a lot of stuff out of his last chapter in his Love and Death book on comics for his Seduction of Innocent book, which a lot of people don't realize. But anyways, uh, he goes on this long letter and he lists out all these just several hundred comics publications from the 1800s. And I'm typing all these names and stuff into uh, the old Usenet in the mid-90s, 1996, 97. And back in those days, he put 25 words for the keywords before you wrote your message, because the internet would only search the first 25 words of the of the internet. Just that's what it would do. And six months later, a lady from Oakland gets a hold of me and says she's got this Obadiah Old Buck, which I got a Italian reprint sitting on that table there with that blue cover. Some friends of mine in, in Italy, everybody that wants to can welcome to flip through that little binder there. And um, two people responded to her, Doug Wheeler and myself. Now, he already had a copy, he thought, and I wrote her back because she was asking how much I paid for this thing. She said it had been her, in her family for generations since it was published, seven, eight generations. Her grandfather left her a letter, which I've got somewhere in my finals, saying, this is the first comic book. Take care of it. But she had a baby and she needed baby stuff, so I just wrote her back, I will double whatever other offer you get, I will simply double it. I just had to have, I didn't know what it was, it just had to have it. And Doug Wheeler offered $100, keep in mind this is now 17 years ago now, so different time, mentalities and time spans before eBay was getting off the ground, etc. And so I ended up paying $200 for it, I got it in the mail, I was, some months later I was heading to a New York City show, to do more research there after that show at the New York Historical Society and the New York Public Library, where they've got just amazing stuff, you know, just paging, hours and hours paging through these things looking for comic strips that nobody ever knew existed, it seems like, from all the history books that are all wrong prior to 1999. Just, they are. And I've had some of these historians get actually get kind of mad at me, you know, because I showed them up. But I didn't mean to, it just happened, I backed into it by accident. 
I wasn't seeking this stuff because I'd been working on the origins of the uh, direct sales market, the rise of the comic book store, that I, a book I called Comic Book Store Wars. And I, when I encountered this thing, I did this 90 degree turn into the, like, gotta find out what this is all about. This is more important because nobody knows about it. And this Obadiah Holdbuck, uh, I pit stop at Doug at Wheeler's place in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, where he lived. And it turns out he had a second printing of it. And what I had was a first printing of it from a place called Wilson and Company, published September 14th, 1842, right on the cover. Brother Jonathan Extra Number 9. Brother Jonathan being a precursor, kind of like an Uncle Sam character of what America was supposed to be all about. Brother Jonathan. And it was the National Lampoon of its day. And they started printing these cheap literary things, then these things. Brother Jonathan Extras. Number one was a Charles Dickens novel that they published for 12 cents. And there was a major book publisher who put out a $2 hardcover. And I've got bound volumes that I've tracked down the Brother of Jonathan newspaper where Charles Dickens is sending in letters. He's complaining that they're putting out these cheap reprints and he's not getting any money out of it. And they're just laughing at it because there's no international copyright laws back then. And they were using the original printing plates off of the British edition, which is the American the first American comic books, actually a reprint, but it's reconfigured because the British edition is like this size about like yay. And it's like single tiers, like three or four panels per page. But this thing has got six to 12 panels per page printed on both sides of the page. It's a wraparound binding, 40 pages long. It's got to come with a cover. It's a little yellow thin paper and stuff, which is exactly what the first page is, the black, yellow page is blank on the back, which I tracked down a copy of that also at one point. And that in turn, this British edition, the printing plates came over on the e uh, Great Eastern, first steamship uh, across the Atlantic. It happened to just, all this history just kind of folds into each other. It's fascinating. And the Tilton Bogue edition from 1841 is something that George Cruikshank funded, his brother, Robert Cruikshank, did the title thing on this Obadiah Old Buck, but it's a reprint from the 1833 Albert edition from Paris, which in turn is a reprint, a pirate reprint from Topher's first print in 1828 in Geneva, Switzerland. So that's where the comic book strip, the comic strip book originates. I don't care what any other history book says, it comes out of 1828 in Geneva, Switzerland, and there's a Topher Museum in Geneva I've always wanted to go to. They have all the original artwork to these things. He did seven comic books until he died prematurely in 1846 at the age of 45. He was born in 1799.